Joining us now for a further look into the overall East African region is Roy Daniels, head of Africa Trading and Rand Merchant Bank. And we're going to take a look at uh, the views that investors have when it comes to East Africa. And it really is all about yield, isn't it, Roy? And we've got very high interest rates there, but we've also got a very high uh, inflation environment. I think the yields are now finally kicking into the attractive level. With inflation being coming into check as it has been, especially in Kenya. And uh, it's a very different picture that I have of Kenya sort of this month than I probably had at the end of last year where I think they were getting things a little bit wrong. But inflation in check coming lower, um, not cutting rates hurriedly. And I think it's, it's gaining a lot of confidence, sort of uh, investor confidence in the country. Uganda, on the other hand, I think have probably sort of buckled under political pressure to cut rates too and quickly. And sitting in a negative real interest rate yeah. environment because it's got an interest rate of 20%. We've got inflation sitting at just above 25%. Correct. So is this, is this a dangerous environment in which they're playing with? Or do you think it's going to come down? I think it'll come down. Um, I think Kenya was in, a, was in a similar situation, but they seem to have controlled it a bit better. I think Uganda continues to import some inflation, some sort of hangover inflation from the region into Kenya. Uh, in, into their country, into Uganda. So I think they're going to struggle a little bit, but I think they will come right. They need to be wary of the sort of political pressure. I know there's been a lot of talk locally of the, um, the, the businesses and small businesses cannot operate at those high yields. So they've, they've buckled to it. They've cut the rates too quickly. They now need inflation to catch up. The currency is not helping. I mean, currency weakened to 2,600 in a very short space of time the other day. Over, I think, a period of two days, we moved from 24, 20, 2,600. Was this the result of the interest rate cut that we saw, that we started to see investors saying, OK, now we need to move away from Uganda? I think the, when, they had, when they had an auction, a huge amount of the auction got taken up locally and by one player in particular. That led to a lot of guys then having to then repatriate the funds that they transferred in. Plus, it's, it's dividend payment season for them. So the currency's been under a bit, a bit of pressure. It's held its own now a little bit, stabilized a bit, but um, again, December, that would have been my, my, my flavor, would have been Uganda. Um, we're switching now probably to Kenya over Uganda at okay, this Okay, so stage. the IMF is also saying that uh, inflation in Kenya could actually hit below 10% later on this year. Are you of the same view? And I see you smiling already, so <laughs> perhaps not as optimistic? I'm, I'm, I'm not as, as optimistic. I think that you could probably get it down to probably 11, 12%, but uh, going into single di digit figures, you know, there was a similar story last year where they expected Kenya to head back down towards sort of check in the mid-teens and come lower. And uh, obviously we saw what happened there. It was an absolute blowout the, there. We know that the shilling weakened to 107 to the US dollar late last year. We see, we, we're sitting at around 82, 83. And some say because of a lot of intervention that came through from the central bank, there is a concern that this kind of intervention is not going to be able to be sustained going forward. And this is a big risk. I think the, the, the measures they took um, caught a little bit of the players off guard and uh, introducing things like no offshore to offshore trading. All trades have to go onshore. I think all those things helped the currency. We saw liquidating of, of some long dollar positions taking place from offshore, offshore. So that helped it. The central bank has always said, look, we want to see currency stability. Um, I think they bought some dollars in the markets, but I don't think they're that, that concerned about maintaining a range now. I think you could see the 82 level coming under threat. Um, could head as low as 80, but I think the central bank, as I say, I mean, surprisingly, it's, it's cut us out of the market. We can only, you can't fund yourself anymore against a, a short position easily. You've got to fund for a year. So that's helped immensely as well for the and currency. And news out today, for the first time since November last year, we saw an increase in petrol and kerosene prices, marginal increases, but again, really an indication of what we see on the overall oil scenario globally. Yeah. How much of a risk is this? Because we are expecting to, this, for this to be counteracted with a much stronger shilling. I think where we're sitting, we, we, we take that sort of uh, level of, of oil price rise. It's small. Um, in, 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 in light of the currency, in light of where inflation's come down, I think that the hike in the fuel prices in kerosene, we say there. Yeah, exactly. Are, are Super marginal. petrol increase uh, coming up by 0.4 shillings per litre, and kerosene increasing by 0.4 or so shillings per litre. Small increases. Yeah. So I think, I think it's manageable. I think they, with the currency and with inflation, they're giving themselves a bit of room to manoeuvre. Let's also touch on Tanzania, so perhaps a slightly smaller player, but also a very high inflationary scenario, above 19%, Roy. Yeah, I think they've, you know, they've struggled a lot. I think of, of all the, the countries there, given their, their sort of size of, of the economy, they've really battled. They're, for them at 19%, it's, it's extremely expensive. But we are seeing the T-bill rates coming lower there. Um, but they're not, they're not exposed to the, to the FDI markets. There's no offshore investors involved in the fixed income markets there. I mean, you're not allowed to buy it because yeah. of the exchange control regulations. But again, I suppose it's typical Africa, high oil price, high inflation, high food prices, high inflation, they, they all struggle.
Okay, so let's also touch on Zambia, which uh, is an interesting place because we know that uh, the IMF is uh, seeing a lot of positivity emanating from there, although we are starting to see a lot of noise with regards to policies. What is your sense on the, the health of the economic environment there? Very solid. I think it's been performing really well. Um, you know, again, rates have been coming lower, currency has been holding its own, but unfortunately, w without getting involved politically, I think that uh, the President Sata sometimes makes statements that, that panics the market a little bit. I mean, he's come out now recently saying that, you know, the opposition party have unpaid bills or something, so therefore they need, they can lose their seats in the House. So that caused a bit of a sell-off. We saw the, the currency getting paid. What it does at the next auction, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm still fairly bullish on that, on, on those on those yields. Um, we like them lower. We think inflation in check. Yeah, well, there'll be currency movements, but we can live with those. So looking at Botswana as well, we saw very aggressive demand coming through for uh, the latest auction. Are you expecting this to continue? Because we've just heard news out of Botswana that uh, you know we are also concerned with regards to the overall diamond sales. It's mm. also evidence in what we're seeing in Zimbabwe. Um, is it overall a positive picture for you? It surprised us, the bond auction. Um, the sort of aggressive levels that, that bidders were in there. I, I, think that they, I think they were too aggressive. I think you know, Botswana imports inflation from South Africa. You know, we've got some concerns uh, around inflation. I think Botswana should have the same. But again, you know, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of pool of cash about. So maybe someone had a lot of cash and they just needed to invest somewhere, then buying into those bonds made a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, it didn't work for us, I must have been done at those levels. Okay, thank you so very much, Roy. We have to leave it there. Great to have you in studio.